In between fall football parties, holiday celebrations, and family gatherings, tis the season to overindulge. And that can set you up for some serious heartburn, a symptom of a more serious problem which could lead to precancerous condition called Barrett's esophagus. Here to help us steer clear of holiday heartburn and explain more about the dangers is co-editor-in-chief of the American Journal of Gastroenterology, Dr. Brian Lacey. Thank you for joining me today. Great. For, thank you so much for this nice invitation. Now, first, Doctor, what are some common causes of heartburn this time of year? So during this time of year, you can imagine during the holiday season with family members getting together and relatives and friends and coworkers, oftentimes a lot of these social events are centered around food, and unfortunately many adults tend to overindulge with some of these holiday foods. So some of the classic triggers that can cause episodes of acid reflux, that burning sensation, what we call gastroesophageal reflux disease, might be a larger meal than usual. It might be a meal much later in the evening than usual. It may include snacking late at night and going right to bed, but especially it's foods that are richer or oilier or greasier. And all of these are triggers that can create significant reflux symptoms in many adult Americans. Oh, wow, that's very interesting. And um, how would someone know if they have GERD? Right, so many patients come to me asking if they have gastroesophageal reflux disease, or GERD, what we call acid reflux. And what they describe are the classic symptoms, meaning they may point to their lower chest or upper abdomen and say they have this burning sensation. Uh, and this burning sensation typically occurs after a late night meal or a rich meal or a fattier meal or when they lay down to go to sleep. Or they may describe what we call regurgitation, which is the effortless movement of kind of this hot, burning fluid from your stomach to your lower esophagus or even into their mouth or throat. And those are the classic symptoms. So when somebody comes to see me and say, you know, boy, Dr. Lacey, I, I have a late night meal, I overindulge, I maybe have a big pizza before I go to bed, and I get the burning sensation or regurgitation, those are the classic symptoms of reflux, and then we can discuss ways to treat it. Yes, absolutely. Um, can you tell us what is the link between GERD and Barrett's esophagus? Yeah, that's a great question. So as a specialist who focuses on the treatment of acid reflux disease, one of my concerns are those patients with chronic reflux symptoms dating back several years. Because you could imagine how if you have the acidic contents of the stomach splashing up into your lower esophagus, it could burn the lower esophagus, create a lot of irritation and inflammation and injury. And when that occurs over years, the lining of the esophagus, the cells in the lower esophagus actually change. And that change is the condition called Barrett's esophagus. And we worry about that because in some patients, Barrett's esophagus is the first step in the pathway to developing cancer of the esophagus or esophageal cancer. That is really good information to know to look out for that. And um, how is someone diagnosed with GERD or Barrett's esophagus? And you mentioned this earlier that um, it can be treated. How is it treated? Absolutely. So two great questions. <clears throat> so the first thing is there is a distinction between GERD and Barrett's in terms of diagnosis, meaning that we rely upon patients to report their symptoms of reflux to make that diagnosis. So either the substernal the burning sensation underneath their sternum or lower chest or regurgitation, keeping in mind that some patients oftentimes have what we call atypical or unusual symptoms of reflux. It may just be chest pain. It may be a chronic cough or asthma. But when we hear those symptoms in the right patient, we can then initiate treatment for somebody with very mild symptoms that occurs intermittently, maybe once a month. We may, may focus on lifestyle, reduce your weight, light evening meal, low-fat meals, and that's all they need. Sometimes they need over-the-counter agents, uh, things that neutralize acid, and sometimes they need prescription medications. Now, for Barrett's esophagus, we can't rely upon symptoms, and that's an important teaching point for your audience members and listeners, that they need a test, and that test is called upper endoscopy, also called EGD, and this is where we use a flexible, soft lighted tube to directly visualize the lower esophagus. And when we visualize the lower esophagus, 
we can see if there are changes consistent with chronic injury Barrett's esophagus. We can take pictures and we can also take biopsies and then we can discuss really the best treatment for that patient. That is good to know the differences between those two. So that way you'll be able to know um, which one will you need to look out for. And then lastly, doctor, how can people learn more information? Great. So fortunately in this day and age, there are so many very good educational sites on the internet. One of my favorites is a site called learnaboutgird.com. It's all one word, learnaboutgird.com. And this will answer some of the topics we didn't get to today. It'll discuss the diagnosis of GERD, the treatment of GERD, and also the diagnosis and treatment of Barrett's esophagus. Great. Thank you so much for that. And to learn more information, visit www.learnaboutgerd.com. Thank you so much, doctor. It's been a pleasure. Great. Thank you so much for this nice invitation.